Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Retina Roundup. I am Dr. Sanket Patel, fellow in Vitreo Retina and Ocular Oncology and I am going to take you through this month's top 5 articles. Let's start with the first article which studied the effect of perfluoropropane versus sulfur hexafluoride tamponades on the retinal microvasculature after macular hole surgery. It was a prospective comparative study in which 38 eyes of 38 patients with an idiopathic full thickness macular hole were studied. 20 patients were randomized to the C3 effect group and 18 patients to the SF6 group. The changes in foveal avascular zone, subfoveal choroidal thickness, superficial and deep capillary plexus and vessel densities were compared. No significant differences were found between the groups. C3 effect and SF6 gases may have similar effect on the remodeling process of vascular tissues. Coming to the second article, which states pigment epithelial detachment thickness and variability impacts visual outcomes in patients with neovascular age-related macular degeneration. The aim of the study was to evaluate the impact of PD thickness and thickness variability on best corrected visual acuity outcomes in patients with neovascular age-related macular degeneration in the phase 3 of Hawk and Harrier trials. Optical coherence tomography images from the pooled brolicizumab 6mg and aflibercept 2mg arms were analyzed for the maximum PED thickness across the macula at baseline and through to the week 96. In this analysis, greater PED thickness and PED thickness variability were associated with poorer visual outcomes in the patients with neovascular AMD and greater neovascular activity. Moving on to the third article on outcomes in retinal detachment repair and laser prophylaxis for syndromes with optically empty vitreous. A retrospective case series assessed surgical outcomes of 56 eyes with optically empty vitreous that had retinal detachment repair by a single pediatric vitreo retinal surgeon. Better final visual and anatomical outcomes were seen in eyes that underwent initial scleral buckle than in eyes that underwent initial vitrectomy or vitrectomy with buckle. In the eyes that underwent vitrectomy or vitrectomy with buckle, hyaloid elevation correlated with better visual outcomes. Thus, scleral buckle improves outcomes in pediatric eyes with optically empty vitreous. On to the next article, which states that a combined nemodipine alteplase infusion improves vision in patients with CRAO. In this prospective study, selective intra-arterial thrombolytic therapy consisting of nemodipine plus alteplase was found to significantly improve best corrected visual acuity at one month post-treatment in nine patients with acute non-arteritic central retinal artery occlusion. Patients were included if the time of CRAO onset to the predicted time of treatment was less than 24 hours. Minor adverse events during administration of the nemodipine infusion including chemosis and headache resolved after discontinuation of treatment and delayed hemorrhage was seen in three patients following alteplase infusion. Coming to the last article about association between non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug use and development of age-related macular degeneration, a 10-year retrospective cohort study. The purpose of this study was to analyze the associations between development of age-related macular degeneration and regular use of aspirin or non-aspirin NSAIDs. Regular use of aspirin or non-aspirin NSAIDs had protective effects on AMD and neovascular AMD. The effect of aspirin was observed in all patients, while the effect of non-aspirin NSAIDs was observed only in people without arthritis. Well, that brings us to the end of the articles.
थैंक यू